Home Assistant Green is the latest hardware offering directly from Nabucasa, the developers of Home Assistant, and it promises to be the easiest and fastest way to start using Home Assistant with the most affordable price tag yet. Let's take a look at how it works and some of the differences to the Home Assistant Yellow if you are unsure which one is right for you. The Home Assistant Green is the third device in the Home Assistant lineup, with them starting with the Blue almost three years ago, which was essentially an existing hardware platform in the form of the Odroid N2 Plus, with a nice Home Assistant branded case with it. Then came the Home Assistant Yellow two years ago, which was their first proper custom hardware based on the Raspberry Pi CM4, and now today we have the brand new Green which is described by the Home Assistant team as the easiest way to start using Home Assistant, and it's also one of the most affordable ways too, coming in with a price tag of just 99 US dollars, which has the potential to be a really good value proposition for those who want to take their first leap into the world of Home Assistant. Now, I've got two units here for review, one that I bought and paid for on launch day, and another that was sent for review from Nabucasa, both are the exact same, but I did just want to mention that as always. And it's also important for me to mention that we are gonna be stocking and selling the Home Assistant Green in our shop. And I only back and stock products that I personally believe in, otherwise, of course, we wouldn't stock them. But it is important for me to mention that before we get into the rest of this video. And as you know, I will always try and be open and transparent with you as possible. So, you know, just bear that in mind as we go through the video and definitely check out reviews from multiple places. And of course, if you do decide that you want to pick one up, then I'll have links down in the description of where you can do that. As mentioned, the yellow was built on top of the Raspberry Pi Compute Module 4 with its own custom carrier. This is great for a number of reasons, such as excellent support and documentation for the Raspberry Pi, but it also made getting your hands on a yellow really tricky, as Raspberry Pis were almost impossible to get for more than two years, and whilst using compute modules was great for some more experienced users, as it meant you could pick one up with the RAM, storage, and wireless options you wanted, it could be a bit confusing for users who had never heard of a Raspberry Pi before with a plethora of options to choose from. The green takes aim at both of those issues by taking away those options and giving users a device that they can just plug in and start automating. If you have seen or you have a yellow, then the green is gonna look pretty familiar and in line with the design language that they are going for, with the most noticeable, of course, being the clear frosted enclosure that gives you this slight peek into the internals. On the top, the new Home Assistant logo makes an appearance with the subtle green PCB poking through, and up at the front, there are three status LEDs, and around the back, we have the IO for the green, featuring a gigabit ethernet port, a power button, an SD card slot for recovery, an HDMI port for the console, two USB 2.0 ports, and a barrel jack for power. Finally, on the bottom of the green, the entire base is made up of a black anodized heatsink to keep the entire device running cool. If we take off that giant heatsink, inside we find the heart of the green, which is a Rockchip RK3566, a quad-core CPU coming in at 1.8 gigahertz. We also find four gigabytes of RAM and 32 gigabytes of eMMC storage. Now for me, I personally think the specs here are pretty bang on when we consider who this device is aimed at and also the price. I've seen some people question or put down the CPU selected, but honestly, I just don't see it as a problem. Sure, this is a CPU that came out in 2020 and it's not quite as powerful as a Pi 4 CPU if we just look and focus on benchmarks, but as a home assistant server, I just don't think most people are going to notice any speed difference when it comes to running some automations, scripts, and other day-to-day -day tasks for a home assistant server, unless you start getting into using it for CCTV footage, in which case you probably need something a little bit more powerful than a Pi anyways. Would I have liked to have seen the newer RK3588 inside? Sure, it's newer and more powerful, but do I think the CPU limits this device and the people it's aimed at? No, not at all. The more important spec that I generally look for is actually the RAM and the storage. Four gigabytes of RAM to me is the sweet spot and kind of the minimum amount of RAM I'd really like and I would recommend. You can get by with two gigabytes, but if you start running some add-ons and maybe an ESP home compile, I think four gigabytes is a much better pick. So I'm really glad to see that that is the default option here. 
Storage is also pretty good too. Really, really glad that there is no SD card for storage. EMMC is going to last much longer and 32 gigabytes is definitely a good amount for pretty much everything you're going to need it for, unless you start getting into much more complex setups. Out of interest, I did price up the cost of an equivalent Raspberry Pi 4 setup. The Pi 5 isn't compatible just yet. And it does work out to be about 25 to 30 pounds more expensive than the green. And this was just for a basic case that didn't integrate the SSD nicely inside of it. Although you do get more storage by using that setup. However, everything from the green is all self-contained in this nice complete package. In terms of setting up the green, this is now the benchmark as the fastest and easiest way to get up and running with Home Assistant, hands down. It really is a case of taking the green out of the box, plugging in an ethernet cable, plugging in a power cable, waiting two minutes, and then visiting homeassistant.local in your browser and following the steps through. You really cannot go wrong with the setup process. And I'd say that this is starting to get to the level of an Amazon or a Google device in terms of the initial setup. It's actually interesting as I've seen comments on the internet from people saying, oh, for $99, I could buy a used Dell mini PC off eBay and get more power, or I could buy a brand new NUC for the same price with more power. And I think that these people are completely missing the point of this device. Yes, you can do those things, absolutely. That is the beauty of Home Assistant, but none of them are as straightforward and simple to set up as this, not even close. Not everyone has the ability or knowledge to download the latest image from GitHub and flash a drive with it and change boot menus and everything else. Yes, it's simple if you've been there and done it and you have experience, but there is an entire group of people out there who haven't and just want a device that they can plug in and go. And that's exactly what this does. I measured the power consumption of the green at a maximum of 3.6 watts during boot, which then settled into a just constant 1.6 watts during idle, making this a really low power device, which I know is an important aspect for many of us right now. Let's now talk a little bit about the differences between the Home Assistant Yellow and the green, as the yellow is still a device you can buy today. So you might be wondering which one you should get and which one is for you. And for me personally, I think it really comes down to two main features, which is expandable storage and Zigbee built in. The yellow uses a Raspberry Pi Compute Module 4 that can be swapped out on the board, but it's also got an NVMe slot built onto the board, meaning that you can add an M.2 SSD directly to the board, which opens up the possibility of using a 500 gigabyte, a one terabyte, two terabyte, and even more storage, which is great. But I don't think most users will actually need that much storage especially now that backups and media can be stored on a network location. For example, my Home Assistant install is, I would guess, a little bit larger than most, and it currently uses 20 gigabytes of space, so really not that much. So I do think that 32 gigabytes is going to be plenty for most people, but if you are someone who is going to store and retain everything forever, then you might need a little bit more space and the yellow might be more suitable. The other feature is the Zigbee radio built into the yellow. Now, like I mentioned before, you can easily add Zigbee and thread with a SkyConnect or another Zigbee dongle. It's just that the yellow has those things built onto the board and it's all enclosed in this one case. But if you are into the Z-Wave ecosystem, for example, which is more popular in some countries, then you're going to need a dongle or an adapter regardless of which one you choose anyways. The yellow does also have a couple of other features which may or may not be important to you that aren't available on the green. Firstly, if you want to use PoE for power and power the whole thing from a network switch, then that is only available on the yellow. Bluetooth is also only available on the yellow too, although you could add that with a dongle or use Bluetooth proxies with ESP Home instead with the green, which are arguably better anyways than it being built in. Uh, and finally, Wi-Fi is also only available on the yellow and not on the green, but regardless of if you choose the green or the yellow, I would try and steer clear of using Wi-Fi for your home assistant server and use ethernet anyways, where at all possible for the most reliable connection. But again, that is for you to decide if that is an important feature. Finally, the price is the other big factor. The yellow with an equivalent spec of four gigabytes of RAM and 32 gigabytes of storage which again is the one that I would go for. I think that's the sweet spot and 
definitely what I would recommend. Comes in at $194, whereas the green comes in at almost half that price for a much lower price of $99. And if we chuck in a Sky Connect on top of the green to make things equal, we are looking at just under $130, which is quite a saving. Again, it's gonna be down to you if those additional features I mentioned before are worth the difference there. So if you are someone who has been looking at Home Assistant and you just really wanted to give it a try, but you've been daunted by the install process and you just want something that is plug in and go, then this could very well be the device for you to help you do that. I think this is a great little device for beginners or even intermediates to get started on that is going to last you for quite a while as you grow and expand your smart home. And equally, this could be a nice device to switch to if you have something like a Pi 3 maybe, or if you're using a Pi 4 with say an SD card and maybe one or two gigabytes of RAM, this could be a great little upgrade to something with a bit more memory and more importantly, much better storage too. And at just 99 US dollars, it's really not that expensive for what you are getting. And that is about it for the Home Assistant Green. It's really cool to see some more hardware directly from the developers of Home Assistant that directly supports the project and is gonna be very well supported for the years to come. And yeah, just really cool to see them make their own hardware. Super stoked on that. If you do want to pick up a Home Assistant Green, then I'll have it linked down below as to where you can find it, either through us if you'd like to support us, and thank you if you do, or through some of the other retailers, you will find that down in the description. I'm really interested to hear your thoughts on the green as always. Do hit me up down in the comments and of course we can have a chat about it. Love to have a discussion with you guys. Other than that, please drop this video a like, get subscribed if you haven't already, and I will see you in the next video.